Hey, uh, I like to give my, I like to give my testimony of what I've seen and experienced in my life. And for how short it is, I'm 30 years old now. But when I was two years old, that was the day my mom died. My dad was gone before I was even conceived. He was deported for cocaine trafficking. And my mom was a coke addict, so trouble in paradise, if you want to call it that. But I saw what I wouldn't see for 28 years. Is that I remember a blackout and then God, for when I was abandoned for Christmas, for like, I don't know how many times I've been abandoned in life, but I was abandoned for my 30th birthday in Christmas. For doing fuck all, basically, but I experienced ghosts and an attack from the whole army, apparently, but I experienced bits of pain, ear popping, um, but not normal popping, like a rapid popping, like over and over and over and over and over, about, I don't know, a hundred... 50 times like it went through back and forth and I'm not gonna tell my cleaning that I did on my body but when I punched the window out of frustration of all the fucking shit that was going on I went to the sink in my bathroom in my hotel and my hands they healed right in front of my eyes they went from bloody impacted glass to bits of glass poking out of my skin and falling out and my skin healed no blood it wiped away and after that I was looking at my right toe and right in the crevice of the left side of my big toe I saw like apparitions or something of blood it looked like a centipede and pus before that and then it disappeared it all disappeared i would imagine jesus cleaned my feet and i don't know why it was hurting so much but it's gone now my pain but all before that i had sexual experience with a ghost that i met when i met suicide when i was suicidal and i breached the horizon of passing over he eventually got me back but what I experienced was a full pretty much alone time with my soulmate but she goes by Pandora I don't know why I had to be orphaned and used for my compensation towards the rent for my foster mom but I love my foster mom but I it was a burden to take care of her at the same time as she was taking care of me but it's hard to talk someone about this because I'm all alone I had a date that I didn't want and then I go to my crush and she pretty much turns her back on me and that's when I just started to slow down and not really take care of myself at all because I felt no point I was like no one wants me so just I just went days without showering but not so long where I took a shower and stuff but the COVID really fucking fucked with my mind and when I was at the hotel it scared the shit out of me because they took advantage of my fact that I'm mentally ill with something that you don't even have proof of but they say schizophrenia psychosis whatever it's no excuse to drag me out of my home and then one of the cops touched me my genitals and my social worker doesn't want to do anything about it so if you think it's easy getting a pwd check you're wrong because there's so much shit that buried with it like discrimination and dark dark fucking almost described as racism but 
I can't help that I have a disability, but I got strapped to the bed twice. That's like for doing nothing. And they just wanted to strap me for no reason, just because I could be someone that is, I guess, violent, but I'm not violent. I've never been violent. I grew up playing rugby, so I guess I'm a big guy, but that's no excuse to fucking throw me on a bed for eight hours and just because I sleep doesn't mean I didn't pee. And when I peed, the Lord took away that urine and put it somewhere else. But I didn't have to embarrass myself with the wetness and deal with it. Instead, he took it and it was dry. Is that a bad thing? No. But I'm, it's, I'm already called crazy. Imagine if I experienced what I've experienced and then they go and for what are they going to call me double crazy like seriously I know what I do but if it interacts with this world it's real and I was seeing alter alter like shot like people that looked like other people that were at the hotel but they were they were not they were um like first of all I saw the manager but then I saw him again but he was in a robe and had a giant staff and it wasn't him I knew it I'm like something's going on and he used 109 and he did not use a card he just opened the door and entered when those doors require key cards and that's not the only one and then after that I think I met alien or something but like it was disguised as human but I kind of like posed like like something that it believed I was God or something. But I was just lying to it just for a joke. But it, it horizontally blinked and then started running away after I confronted it. And it's weird because it used the door without a key card again. I don't know what the fuck happened during that Christmas, but fucking... I, I'm not lying, like, I'm fucking still amazed, like, and wowed by all the shit that was piled together, but I'm still, like, amazed that, yeah, and, that, and the visions, it felt like I could contact, the, like, the, I could see the images with my brain, but not my eyes, and it was coming from the universe, the edges of the universe, and for some reason i could see in the nighttime a bunch of suns like multiple suns in the in the sky at nighttime no one else to and it was cold cold winter this year but i was left unattended and they think that's a reason to kidnap me away from my hotel when i'm at my hotel sleeping they wake me up and kidnap me and drag me to it and that was the first time and then they touched me in the genitals and then the second time they do it again they strap me to bed again when i get to the hospital it's not funny dealing with these assholes but this is the life i've been abandoned to live for but you know what i do believe in god and you know what he maybe we are supposed to have if we are going to heaven we have to have a hard life but I've seen so much ignorance from people. Like, don't think you're special. Don't think because Jesus died that you get an automatic pass to go in heaven. No, you have to do some fucking chores for him. I do feel. And I did not get respected by my ex-girlfriend's family. Alexa Jarvis and your Robin Jarvis and whatever the fuck the dad was calling me. Big Hulk and shit. I don't owe you a penny, but you know what the funny thing is? If you weren't such a dick and an awful person, mom, like Robin Jarvis, you could have gotten paid to look after me. The rent would have been covered and then bonus 750 for you. And then there would be money to feed me instead of fucking just fucking making a whoop de doo about nothing. And you asked me about my race. I already told you I had no family. But I don't even care anymore because I'm not a wannabe victim. 
I actually have a hard life that I don't really talk about. But I was a football player. I had to fucking quit. Because I don't want to fucking break my back for you anymore. Because I like thought I could keep it as a surprise. That I was working hard to become a junior. But it didn't matter apparently to my ex. So I quit. I guess. The, the dream. But I got music that I do. It still was not as cute and sweet as I was. She said, not right now. Because she likes someone else. And when I confront her again, or like, like tried to like steer around whatever the logic she said, and she eventually came to, oh, I'm not ready for a serious relationship. And what the fuck are you doing with everyone? Like, like seriously. Like, you can't, can't have, like, casual dating and not tell someone you're doing that. And why would you do that when you have someone who's willing to be taking, taking things serious for you and take, take no advantage of you, be friendly? I asked, I told you, uh, when I asked you out, there was another guy I asked her out. I'm like, I can't, I'm not here to force you to do anything. If you want, choose someone it's up to you but I guess I ended up biting the bullet with that comment because she didn't choose me even if she did like me she didn't act on it so I'm wondering what the fuck am I here for I was that passionate to fucking give my all and it's still not amount to anything God's gonna fucking like balance the value and it was all face because of a face she she might like, but she doesn't get that the person that she cheated on me was was the guy who stole my car. I don't care that he stole my car. I didn't press charges, but I'm like, think about what you're doing for a second. Everyone was nasty to me. So I get a little angry. I'm allowed to be angry when I'm dealing with that much shit. And you just don't want to understand because I'm poor? What the hell do you want me for? Like, then when you, then you come up to me for money? Like, seriously, is what your dad wanted. Like, I owe your family some labor chore to get to the girl of the daughter. Like, you don't pimp out your daughter like that. And she's with some... Some other guy, he's, uh, he's East Indian, probably nice, but I just don't like the timing of it. I don't agree with it, but here I am, and my the system, it doesn't help me worth shit. It, it takes advantage of my money and shit, and puts me in a place where it's hard to be. That's not our system doing anything that's just other people getting paid to write a bunch of paperwork or, or about me and get me in trouble well i good thing that they can't report anything because i don't do anything i'm not a terrible guy i'm actually a nice guy but i'm i'm surrounded by people who are just absolute wannabe victims for no real reason other than to be attention like i don't get attention i don't never did get it i got bullied i have no friends or family growing up and it, it's mentally tough i was a rugby player i was a defense single-handedly would stop tries by myself and i didn't get any appreciation for that shit i got fucking made fun of for not scoring tries well if you actually get fucking handed me the ball and actually made me a part of the team maybe but I scored two tries my whole year years of playing but I, I stopped a lot of tries and I swapped the ball from team to, to our team but it's a lot of work playing that game but she she admitted that oh I must have a yeah, she realized I did have a hard life. But did she... She blocked me on Facebook because I confronted her. 
and she blocked me. Well, too bad she doesn't know how to unblock because she wanted to be back with me. But then she goes and turns her back on the opportunity. And her mom says, well, that's because you cross the line with your language. I'm like, fuck off with this shit. I didn't say that to her, but like, seriously, what am I supposed to do? Like, I'm not, I'm only human. It's part of the language to swear. When you're an adult, they're all adults. Like, this isn't church sometimes, and some people have it hard in life. Get through it to your head. But I still have these awful anger about what happened with that family and me. Like, she was so rude and obnoxious to me back, so it's like even Steven, but what the point what is the point of playing me down and torturing down my legacy when all I do is try and make things work with what I do have? And it's not like I'm broke. I do have money because of my 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 what is it? Compensation. But she doesn't care the fact that I was a child in the womb that nearly died because of drugs and alcohol, probably. My mom, she had HIV, so I almost got HIV also. Like, how hard do you want me to live and then ignore and then suck up to you, a grown-ass woman who separates her husband, the child of her, like, the father of her child, like... And then she goes like, it wasn't much of a marriage to me. I don't need to know your fucking shit. I'm trying to be nice and fucking like optimistic. But fuck. I don't like some women. Like, they're totally selfish. Self-absorbed in shallow things. And I don't need your judgment. I don't need anyone's judgment. But when it comes to love, man, it, don't fucking leave anyone out. That's why I wouldn't do. I wouldn't leave it someone out when they said they liked. They were. I would take them in, and, and if something did happen, just work it out like an adult. But if it's not meant to be, I guess it's not meant to be. But like, at least try not to be like wasting someone else's time, because. You don't know how someone really likes you when they say they have a crush on you. Because it's their heart, man. Like, I don't know why she has to go and and just do what she did. and just. I guess that's why God came to me. But that's between me and him. And Jesus is allowed to be angry too. I wouldn't judge him. It's hard imagining what he had to go through, but every day I can't, I think about that. But there's everyday miracles that all over the internet that's being recorded and stuff. And I don't know why there's atheists. Like, you, you eventually die and you you gotta admit, like, where did you come from, then, if there's no God? See, you face things face value. Me, I'm a part of a system beyond this government system. I'm part of heaven. And where I come from is the light. And I remember seeing the light before I was born. It's, like, really hard to imagine even if I have a, have a potential mate on this earth because it's such a shitty time period where the youth are just so shallow they're all on drugs not all of them sorry half of them nearly are on drugs I'm on drugs because I have nothing left I like the take my middle name Joseph biblical name and I use my native ancestor animal white crow because that's what they use 
the name for for fetal alcohol kids on the reservation or something or just native kids that were born fetal alcohol they get thrown for the nest early premature birth i was premature and they have to grow up a little bit harder like harsher environment and there's only one of them and they only mate usually white crow and white crow but there i haven't I felt a sense that there was no white crow anymore. I couldn't, I haven't seen one, but I felt like that spirit of that crow went inside of me. And I like to call Pandora a panda bear. But also when I was at the hotel, I remember writing a book, uh, grabbed a red velvet book. I drew on it and it was beautiful, but it was like, I was so bothered by the goat. I slant, I threw it up in the air. And the, as the pages were flipping, I could see the ink reverse in right. And I saw a pink, orangish orb float towards the book. I was happy. I don't know why, but I closed the door. Waited two seconds, open it, no one's around. It's gone, the book. So, that's why I know everything I said was real, true. Because it's easy to track and track down and keep, keep a record of what I've heard and seen and how to explain it. Because I feel no energy wasting in lies. I feel like I feel no point in wasting time spewing lies when then when it's like it's just too short for lies like why do you gotta lie to get ahead why don't you just work ahead of like work ahead but I can't believe some of the things that happened at hotel but that guy at the management such a prick Good thing he sold that place for CLBC to to take advantage of or to house people, I guess, on disability. But he was not a nice man. He was not nice at all. But my testimony keeps going, though, from now on. I'm never going to forget that my hands healed under the water that I poured. I wish someone could saw that. And then when the social worker came by, they told, demanded me to respect them. I was zero fucking point earned. And then I heard the voice of Jesus yelling at them, saying, you're me messing, you're like, why are you messing with an orphan and a widow. And it was a lot different than my voice. And for some reason, I guess he thought it was my voice. But I tried opening the door and it, there was no locks on it. And it would not open. It would not open. And I could kind of see Jesus, but I'm like, I'm not trusting that he was physically there. Just like a ghostly there. That only I could see probably. But... I'm not delusional. My social worker has the balls to say I'm delusional. But I'm not delusional, man. I've been through so much shit that I'm tired of it. Because when I tell the fucking truth, like, there's an alternate dimension that we experience within this dimension. We, we experience two experiences at the same time sometimes. Sometimes they get mixed up. But I know what I saw. I'll give you an example of when I draw my artwork out, or I already drew it out. And I'm gonna show you later what I saw and what I drew. But I'll be in there for the next video. Peace.